I'm Bob Irving, RH Irving Home Builders. We're building a super insulated house here in Salisbury. As you can see, it's a fairly traditional Cape style bungalow. Uh, so from the outside, it looks like a very traditional New England house. Basically, we're building a house where we're insulating the whole envelope of the house, including the basement and the, the small attic. So everything is inside the thermal envelope. We're, work, we're using a few different principles in building the house. One is minimizing thermal bridges in the house. One is maximizing the insulation levels. One is making the house virtually airtight. We're doing a continuous air barrier all around the house. The roof sheathing forms the air barrier on the roof and the walls through the foundation. We're doing a, a foam air barrier along the foundation and a plastic air barrier under the slab. One of the things we're using for air sealing is a new tape that has just been imported from Switzerland in the last few months. It's called SEGA. This is an acrylic, non-toxic, uh, acrylic tape that's non-toxic adhesive and it seals very well to virtually anything. So we're using that and sealing up the joints in the, in the roof sheathing around windows and doors and other places that need to be sealed. Thermal bridging happens when heat passes through dense materials like concrete and wood, which have a low R value. R value is a resistance to heat passing through. So the higher the R value, the less heat passes through them. Concrete and wood have low R values, so heat passes through. We want to keep the heat that we produce in the house in the house. So we cut those thermal bridges so heat does not go through that to the outside. One example is on the concrete slab. We insulate the concrete slab with R20 foam and then put polyethylene on top to keep dampness out of the concrete. And we break the concrete at the footing and the wall. So we get the concrete slab is isolated and we don't get heat passing through those to the outdoors. We insulate the outside concrete foundation on the inside, which keeps the heat again on the inside of the building. So we've got insulation under the slab, around the foundation, up through the rim joist. We've got rubber gaskets at the sill on the foundation and under the exterior walls to minimize the air infiltration at those levels. We've got double stud walls, which have an R value of about R37, a roof assembly that's got an R value of about 62. Uh, the house is sealed against air infiltration. And one of the ways we do that is by eliminating the overhangs when we build the house. That corner is sealed with, with tape, and then we add on the overhangs afterwards. The, uh, the outside of the house, we have a rain screen which keeps the wooden siding away from the walls so that the siding can dry out in, when they get damp in a rain or in the winter. The floor joists and the rafters are manufactured lumber so we can get the depth we need. They stay straight uh, and for instance, in the roof, we have a 16 inch deep roof cavity so we can get our R value, but it's not solid lumber because solid lumber is a thermal bridge that can bring heat directly to the outside. So by using the manufactured lumber, we're minimizing the thermal bridging through the rafters. The double stud walls minimize the bridging through the walls and the foam, the insulation minimizes the bridging through the concrete. The heating source in the house is going to be three mini, what's called mini splits, which are air source heat pumps. Uh, a heat pump is like a refrigerator. It moves heat from one place to another. Uh, these are going to be Mitsubishi hyperheat units, which provide heat to the inside of the house down to 13 below outside. They're very efficient. They're about two to three times as efficient as a baseboard electric heat. Since we're using the mini split heat pump for heating the house, the house is all electric. There's no fossil fuels used in heating the house and the, the uh, insulation in the house will keep the house from freezing uh, for several days after a power outage. We're working on developing a backup heating source for longer power outages and we're going to use photovoltaic system 
with battery backup. So we could run at least one of the heat pumps, the refrigerator and the well pump for an extended period of time in the event of a long-term power outage without using fossil fuels. That pretty much covers all of the energy features of the house. Let's go look at some of the specifics. This is the exterior wall of the house. It's a double wall, as I said. The exterior two by four is the structural wall, and there's the airspace, and then the interior partition wall. This will be netted with a fiberglass netting, and then the cavity will be filled with dense pack cellulose. And then the rafters are 16 inch TJIs, which is a manufactured rafter. The web on the rafters between the inside and the outside is very thin, so the thermal bridging through that is minimized. We'll be putting closed cell spray foam against the roof sheathing and then filling the rest of the cavity with dense pack cellulose, giving us an overall R value of about 62. We're here on the first floor of the house. This is the exterior double wall that I talked about earlier. The outside wall is two by four, that's the structural wall. Then we have an air space and then we have the interior partition wall. This will be netted with a uh, fiberglass netting and will be filled with uh, dense pack cellulose insulation. And over here you'll see the window, so we'll have extra deep window sills. And this is the uh, triple glazed window, which is also a, a tilt takeout window, which are fairly common nowadays. But this is a triple glazed window made in Maine. It's got a, a U value of 0.2. This is a standard Thermatrue exterior door, but in order to minimize the air infiltration, we've added multi-point locks. So in, in addition to latching in the middle, it also latches at the top and down near the bottom. We're here in the basement of the house and we're insulating the exterior of the, of the wall. This is the, actually the interior of the foundation wall. We're insulating this with closed cell spray foam. We'll have two inches of that against the concrete. And that extends up into the rim joist to insulate all of that. And then the spray foam will overlap onto the back of the studs to air seal the stud base. And then the stud base will be insulated with another type of uh, either cellulose or fiberglass insulation. Basements in New England used to be cold, damp, uncomfortable spaces. The, uh, what we're doing in this house with the insulation under the slab, isolating the slab from the surrounding concrete, the polyethylene under the floor, the spray foam against the wall, the interior insulation on the walls, all that combines to make a very comfortable, warm, and dry space. Our homes utilize the heat recovery ventilation system, which brings in a constant supply of fresh air and exhausts stale air at the same time. The air that is leaving the house gives up its heat to the incoming air so that the air coming out of the fresh air ducts in the house is not far below the temperature of the rooms. The fresh air is brought into a number of rooms, usually the living spaces and bedrooms in the house, and the air that is leaving the house is coming from bathrooms typically bathrooms, kitchen, mudroom, and laundry rooms. This is the heat recovery ventilation system for the house. This is the central unit. Uh, this is the ductwork for the fresh air. As I said, there's no heating ductwork in the house, but there is fresh air ducted to a lot of the house and exhaust air from other parts of the house. Heat recovery ventilation system sounds pretty complicated, and with the ductwork, it looks pretty complicated. It's actually pretty simple. There are just two moving parts, in the machine, there's two six inch fans. And the, the central core of the machine is the heat transfer filter here. Fresh air comes in and goes this way through some aluminum plates. Exhausting air goes this way and the, the heat from the air leaving is given up to the heat coming in. So that's it in a nutshell. Very simple machine, uh, but it brings in uh, close to room temperature air into the house 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We're working to develop homes that are more reliable, longer lasting, more resilient to temperature variations, healthier, much less expensive to heat, far more comfortable, affordable, and free of fossil fuels.